Hello, Lana. Welcome back to our lectures. We are still doing biology group for one, and that is the introduction to biology. And today we have a very interesting uh, chapter to look at. Uh, it is about the common apparatus, common apparatus used in collection and observation specimens. In our previous lessons, we said that apparatus that are used in collection, handling, and observation of specimens are very important because they make our work in examining these specimens easy. And now, I told you to go and check, look at the diagrams, some of which I have come with today, and familiarize yourself with these apparatus. At least in a given uh, examination, you'll be required to know which apparatus to use and how to use them, and especially when you're collecting, handling, and observation of these specimens. Welcome, and make sure at least you have a few of them that you put at your fingertips. The first one, number one here is the strip net. The strip net. The strip net has a pillow here, and it has a net, and there is a place where the strip net will enter. The strip net is used for catching flying insects. Examples of flying insects, you have bees, butterflies, grasshoppers, among others. So any specimen that is flying, fly, for example, bees, butterflies, grasshoppers, you catch them using what we call a strip net. Number two is the bait trap. The bait trap, you can see, is a diagram. Look at my diagram. Uh, there is a bait at this corner here. There is a bait. A bait is something like a food substance that is going to attract uh, the specimen that you want to trap. Then there is a hole through which the specimen will enter. And then, of course, when the specimen enters, it will be unable to get out, and so you will have collected it. So the function of the bait trap, bait trap is for attracting and trapping small animals, for example, rats, mice. Uh, it will be very wrong if you don't say attracting. If you just say trapping, it is wrong. So you have to say attracting and trapping small animals, for example, rats and mice. That is why there is a section for the bait at this corner here. The third apparatus is the pitfall trap. Let us look at its part. Uh, there is what we call a dustbin cover. This is a foam that has been placed, and then kind of a bottle is put underground, and then this is the ground, then there is a dustbin cover on top of that uh, hole, which has some kind of container for collection of these specimens. The dustbin cover has supports on both sides, this side and this side. There are supports, uh, 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 support, there are supports for both uh, sides. Then the function of the dustbin cover, dustbin cover prevents rain and sunshine from getting in. Maybe you're collecting your specimens or you've just placed this pitfall trap and you're waiting for specimens to uh, crawl, I mean, enter that uh, uh, apparatus. Maybe it may rain. If rain comes and then water flows into this apparatus, it will be difficult for the uh, specimens to be collected and probably it becomes difficult to use it when there is too much rain. And that's why we're covering the top of it to prevent rain from uh, water from entering. And of course, sunshine, because too much sunshine may also uh, kill the specimens. The function of the pit fall trap is for catching crawling animals, for example, lizards, spiders, ants, cockroaches, and other insects. These are insects or specimens that crawl on the ground. That's why we assume that they are going to crawl and that eventually they will enter into this pitfall trap. Number four is the fish net. The fish net, it is also, uh, it looks like uh, a strip net, but there's a slight difference on its top 
phone it has a handle just like the street net. Now look at this. The fish net uh, has also has a hole on our space in which the specimen that you're collecting will enter. It is used for trapping small fish and other small water uh, small water animals. Those animals that live in water, for example, the grass and trees are going to be collected using the fish nets. And actually we are saying small fish, not all types of fish. Number five, we have the puta. The puta is a very special uh, apparatus that is used for sucking animals, actually small animals, e.g. ants, termites, from rocks, surfaces, or backs of trees. These organisms are going to be sucked from the backs of trees or even rock surfaces. And we've given examples of ants, termites, uh, that you may easily find on rock surfaces and of course at the backs of trees. When you want to collect them, you use a putter. Let us look at the parts of a putter. A putter has got two tubes. The first tube is for collecting the insects on this side, on the right hand side. The second tube is a tube that is for application of suction. Suction is going to be applied at this end, the last tube here. And at the end of the tube inside this container, putter, there is what we call the mosquito netting. The function of the mosquito netting is to prevent dirt from entering the suction tube. To prevent dirt from entering this tube, suction tube, then we use what we call the mosquito netting. Finally, as I move to the next one, I will put it this way, that you must be very keen on the parts of this apparatus. Because you see, down here we have, after this uh, netting, the mosquito netting, we have the specimen down here. So you must indicate that. And of course, these two arrows, the arrow that shows you the collection of the specimen that enters this collection tube. And then of course, there is this arrow that shows suction from this tube that comes from the mosquito netting outwards. And the function, as I repeat, the last uh, time is for sucking small animals, e.g. ants, termites, of course, from rock surfaces and bark of trees. Number six, we have a pair of forceps. A pair of forceps. This one is not for collection as such, but it is an apparatus that is used for picking small stinging animals and plants. I talked about when you are handling injurious specimens. Specimens that can injure you, dangerous specimens. You use a pair of forceps to pick them. Example of these organisms that you can use, or these specimens, you can say centipedes. Remember, centipedes are injurious. We have spiders, they are also poisonous. We have stinging nettle, which is an example of a plant. So, when you are picking them, picking them so that you can do an examination or you study them, you must use a pair of forceps. Common mistakes when you are referring to these apparatus, most students forget and say forceps without a pair you may be penalized. It is good to say a pair of forceps. Number seven, specimen bottles. I have drawn two specimen bottles. You can have a look at them. The first one is smaller, the other one is bigger, and they almost look different in terms of shape. So specimen bottles are for keeping collected specimens, and the size depends on the size of the specimen. So the smaller the specimen bottle, the smaller the size of the organisms used uh, I mean, uh, to serve in it. The larger the size of the specimen bottle, then it means the specimen that we have, that we are taking for the study, after we've collected the specimen, uh, are going to be of large size. Finally, we have the last one, we call it the hand net. This is a very interesting apparatus. Uh, just like uh, we have said, there are apparatus that are not used for collection, but are used for observation. 
So the hand lens is used for observation or enlargement of the sapiens so that you can be able to see the structures properly. You look at the fact of a hand lens, it is very common in the exam. You may get a question that requires you to label the parts of a hand lens. And our very nice looking diagram for our hand lens here is we have a handle. This is where you hold. Then we have a frame, the frame. Then at the middle, we have the convex lens. So most students get it wrong because they may label the handle properly, label the frame properly. But when it comes to the convex lens, they like say other three lens, which is wrong. You must tell us what type of lens, and we are saying it is a convex lens. Others say objective lens, which is wrong because objective lenses are found in microscopes. So have a look at that. The three parts are very crucial, and I'm very sure one of these five days in the exams that you do, you will be required to label the parts of a hand lens, or rather, be told to draw the hand lens and label the three parts. You must ensure that you use the right labels on that statement. It is used for enlargement of statements structures, especially during external examination. For example, you want to observe the, the cockroach, or rather the grasshopper. You have to look for a handle so that you can enlarge the parts, for example, the, the legs, the wings, the antennae, and so forth when you do an examination or a study of organisms. As you come to the business of students, I want you to keep in mind that all the eight apparatus that we've looked at, some of them are used for collection, others are used for handling, and others are used for observation. And we can categorize them that way. The sickness is used for collection. The bait trap is used for collection. The feed fall trap is used for collection. The fish net is used for collection and the footer is used for collection. The five of them are used for collection. When it comes to number six, seven, and eight, the function a little bit changed from collection to slightly handling and also observation. The pair of forceps is for handling. That picking, handling. For example, you've collected, uh, uh, you've collected bees and you have to use uh, to study them. As your specimens, you will use a hand lens, uh, sorry, a pair of forceps so that you can be able to pick those dangerous or injurious specimens that you are uh, going to study or examine. Number seven, specimen bottles. These bottles are for storing or temporarily keeping the specimens, maybe when you take them to the lab, or maybe you want to use them uh, maybe in another time. Uh, so you temporarily store them in the specimen bottles or you study them using the specimen bottles and we are saying they are of different shapes and sizes depending on the type of specimens that you have in question. Then the last one is this is one the handles for observation, for enlargement of the specimen so that you can study. Make good diagrams, make sure you understand the function and don't want to suffer, be in a position to uh, label them properly. And I'm going to show you draw better diagrams. Continue doing our lessons. I am your teacher, Mr. Momani. My YouTube account, as usual, Wilfred Momani on Khan, hyphen your work. And I like it because so many people are coming so that we can learn together. Subscribe, share, and like every video that we are posting. Goodbye.